This little video is about Wilton Village and its environs. That's Wilton Village near Redcar. And uh, this is part one. It's far too long for just one video on YouTube. So I have to divide it into two. So there are maps of the village and uh, lots of old photographs. One or two of uh, names of people and um, and how it is today, 2013. This is, Wil <clears throat> this is Wilton in the 1853. This is Wilton Castle. It's the St Cuthbert's Church. And this is the fountain gardens here. There's a little footbridge there over the back, which is long since gone. It, it had nice railings round it as well. And this is uh, marked as an ice house. I looked for that, and uh, it's not there any longer. And this track came up from the side of the gardens and over this thing called Waterfall Bridge, which we knew as Lions Bridge as, as lads. And there's a track came round the back of the church and crossed that little bridge there, which is at the bottom of Wilton Bank. This is the road up to Gisborough. And it continued along there all the way to Dunsdale, to East Lodge at Dunsdale. And uh, there's a school for boys and girls there. It closed in the 1930s. There were uh, older people in the village who can remember going to that school. This is... Uh, St Helen's Chapel, which is just in front of the castle, which was set up by Sir William Bulmer. Um, he, had, he made a will in 1531, and he ordained in his will that there should be two priests called the Master and the Brother, and uh, they should say, Mass daily in the chapel and pray for the souls of Sir William's mum and dad and other relatives. And uh, they were to live in a little house near the chapel and they got, I think they got four quid a year for it. And then four poor men and four poor women were supposed to go to the chapel every morning and evening to join in the prayers. And for doing so, they were provided with food and clothing, or if they didn't want that, they got a penny a day each. And then when the Bulmers were at the Pilgrimage of Grace there, when they were kicked off the place, um, the charity will have come to an end. The ruins lie under the, uh, the green, the 13th green of Wilton Golf Course. And they were still there um, in what, 1811. The Bulmers mentioned that they stood near a mill, but I've never been able to find any evidence of a mill at all. She's late. <coughs> this is Lazenby, and the, there were two roads at that time. One came along here, and then right along what is the golf course. Cut in, this is the Castle Drive. Went through the Castle Drive, straight across Wilton Lane, and came out on this corner here. And... Uh, 
So John Bulmer, he wanted rid of it. And he wanted to build a big stone wall right round the estate, certainly around the road. And he managed to buy, according to the information I was given, he managed to buy all the properties on the south side of Lazenby High Street with the intention of demolishing them and, con and building this wall right round the uh, what is uh, now the school wood. But this pub here, the Half Moon, was owned by a chap from Yerby and <laughs> he wouldn't sell him it. It was the only bit of property he couldn't get his hands on. So he built the wall along here as far as he could and it comes to an end just by what was the blacksmith's shop or the garage that's where it finished nevertheless he uh, and having done it this road then was then shut you can still see evidence of it and this track was continued along here, planted with a, a double row of horse chestnut trees, uh, to Wilton Castle. And very nice it is too, particularly this time of year in June with all the chestnut blossom out on the trees. And this is the, what they call it, the parsonage there, but it was a vicarage, and the vicarage. Uh, it's now been sold off, it's a private dwelling now. And this is Wilton in 1953. Nothing much has changed, the castle is still there. St Cuthbert's Church. The fountain gardens, the, uh, the little fence round it and the, the little footbridge have gone. But Waterfall Bridge is still there, Lions Bridge as such. And this monument has made an appearance. This is the vicarage. This little building in front of it was a an Anderson shelter, I think it must have been there from the war. But when I was a lad, it was the scout hut. Lazenby and Wilton scouts used to meet there. And you've got this big line of huts here. It was at one time used as a hospital for soldiers. Whether that was the First or Second World War, I don't know. But eventually it became the ICI offices. Before anything was built on the site, this is where all the action took place. There were large numbers of people worked here. There was about three double-decker buses full of people came every day to work there. Before everybody got cars, and of course the tennis court has made an appearance as well. I'll just move it across. Now you can see the, the new drive to the castle and its double line of conquer trees or horse chestnut trees. You can still see the line of the old road there. Those oak trees in this field are still there. But the road itself along the golf course has disappeared. So this wall was built and on this side of the wall were trees, obviously to screen the castle from the road. We just come up from Lazenby. This is the 
this is the road up the hills. And this is the public footpath went round here. And this particular little bit here was what we call bunkers. And uh, we used to sledge down it. And all this along here is spoil from when they quarried the ironstone before they before they had to start drifting into the into the hillside. So you've got this tramway along here. And at this point there's a Lazenby Bank Road goes over the tramway, there's a bridge there, I think it's in, uh, 1871 it's dated. This little thing here is the SS Castle. Move it a bit further over. The tramway came along here, and the original tramway went under Wilton Lane, and the tunnel is still there, although it's in a rather parlous condition, down this little cutting. And through this tunnel here, this concrete tunnel, which is still there, although it's blocked off at both ends now with farm rubbish, and into this quarry where the ironstone was mined, Lovell Hill Quarry. This is uh, Lovell Hill Farm, where the caddies lived. Uh, they had a lad a little bit older than me who, who now lives in Canada. This is a Wilton engine house, which was brand new. I think it was in 1916 it was built. So the new tramway went under a different tunnel and then along here to Challoner Pit. This is Gramsgraft, where that kilometre spring is. And here you can see, this is the SS, you can see where the, all these drifts have collapsed, all these gorfs have collapsed in. There were hundreds of little ponds here when I was a kid. All sorts of wildlife in. I mean, they were heaving with newts, and one of them had a, had a big fish in it, a big goldfish, like a big koi carp. Which a lad from Lazenby called Macaulay eventually caught it and took it home, shoved it in his bath, and it died. We were all a bit annoyed about it, to say the least. <laughs> it wasn't the most popular of people after that. We're now right on the edge of the Wilton Estate. This is uh, Moordale Beck, where it goes down in that dip there was the end. Moordale Beck, or Model Beck as we call it, was the uh, was the end of the Wilton Estate. But where the tramway comes and comes down here, a little building marked there in 1953, this was the Moordale Hauler, which pulled sets of uh, Wagons out of Moordale, out of Challoner Pit, which was down here. Dunsdale Farm was demolished. It uh, there's only a few buildings there now, but it was demolished. This is all that remains of Dunsdale Farm. Demolished, I would think, probably in the in the 60s. And I'm standing on top of the bridge. The tramway from Wilton Hall I came down here. And under here, and along this embankment here, you can see the the concrete remains of the of the bridge. It's all been filled in. The last family to live there were the Seatons, Ernie Seaton and his wife. When the farm was demolished, they were moved to East Lodge at Dunsdale, where 
any seat intended is the immaculate vegetable plot. And I think when it, it was after he died, the uh, the property was sold and has been completely renovated into a very very nice house. This air shaft is still there. It's just full of rubbish, but it sticks up above the ground about six feet. This is uh, remains of the Essen mines. This is an air shaft on Lovell Hill along Wilton Lane. Craft farm or bank top farm as we know it, it's, uh, it's been demolished and rebuilt rather nicely, only recently in the last couple of years. This being 2013. Just on the other side of Moldeo, back were these ponds here. These were surrounded by trees. These were decoys for for ducks. They were designed for attracting ducks for shooting. This is Court Green Cottage, which is still there, rather nice. These are. Well, this is Court Green Cottage. Um, Peter Caddy's granddaddy used to live in these cottages. For a long time they were empty and, uh, and going to rack and ruin and then they were sold off. Uh, or it, it was sold off. It's a lovely site, beautiful views and well sheltered. But all these cottages, they were all tied cottages. You worked on the estate, you lived in them. If you got the sack, you got kicked out. Court uh, Green Farm is still there. This is Court Green Farm, which was part of Wilton Estate, it's still there. But running across was this thing which is marked on the maps as an aqueduct. And it carried fresh water from way up pit top way. I don't mow the back and it used to carry it down to the farms, the castle and the village. The high farm here is just a set of <coughs> just a set of barns now. Sitting in the middle of nowhere. Just wonderful views, but it must have been a bleak place in wintertime. This is all that remains of High Court Green Farm. It was never there when I, when I was a kid, it was a ru always a ruin, but the, the buildings were there. They had a um, corrugated, rusty corrugated sheet roof, so we used to call them red barns. But there was a chap in Wilton Village. Um, a Mr Norman, who was born here. Red Barns or oh, High Court Green Farm. He was known as Maudy Norman. He was a he was a mole catcher, amongst other things. He was a very old man when I knew him, but I used to talk to him when he was catching moles on the golf course. 